My name is Daniel Allen. I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. That's me. It's July 12th, 2009, and I'm on a China Eastern Airlines flight from Los Angeles to Shanghai. Shanghai being the place which this A330 Airbus I'm sitting in is currently descending to. I'm set to be living in an apartment in the Jing'an district. This is not something I particularly wanted to do, by the way. I have little interest in China. Can't speak a word of Mandarin. <laughs> The reason I'm here is because one of my professors at the University of Texas at Dallas, specifically Professor Hervé Abdi, convinced me by telling me this story. The story goes that on September 2nd, 1976, Mao Zedong, leader of China, suffered the third heart attack of his life. This one was very severe. He was in critical condition for many days. During this time, Mao spoke with advisors on matters of state and on reforms to his will in the case that he might die. It was in one of these advisor meetings that science advisor Wu Sing Tao proposed the following, that Mao Zedong's once in a millennia mind should be preserved for future generations. And that is to say, the guy was in love with Mao and wanted to keep his brain after he died. Mao opposed the idea and wished to be cremated. However, Wu Sing Tao wasn't the only one who didn't want Mao burned up. His political advisors wanted to display his body to the people. They won out, and so in a tremendous victory for sure, why not, Mao also agreed to donate his brain to science should he die. And he did die on September 9th, a week after his heart attack. Mao's brain was promptly removed before the rest of his body underwent embalming. His body was presented in memorial service September 18th, 1976 in Tiananmen Square. Meanwhile, his brain was in Wu Sing Tao's personal lab. Wu Sing Tao, by the way, was not hard up for brains, if that's what you're thinking. He had been and continued to experiment on plenty of common people's brains. Experimenting on how to splice, how to dye, how various fluids and energies transmit through the tissue. This is not the story of a quack or a mad scientist, just a regular scientist on the cutting edge of neuroscience in his time. Mao Zedong's brain was on his shelf. He was saving it for his best work, his finest, most detailed 3D map of a brain. And not just images either, maps, graphs, charts of transmittance, weights, densities, levels, chemical signatures, and all sorts of other technical nonsense. Wu Sing Tao published his work, and the few dozen other people on Earth who actually understood it were blown away. I should mention Mao Zedong was not ever mentioned in this publication. For all scientific intents and purposes, the brain's owner was simply subject. This comprehensive resource of data greatly advanced the fields of neuroscience. For example, in 1984, a project by Karlsruhe University in Germany developed a neural network implementation using the data. If you're unaware of what a neural network is, or rather an artificial neural network, it's a computational simulation of neuron activity invented in 1943 by Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts. This specific ANN implementation was further used by various other universities for different projects. One such project was a conversation AI named Mikkel, made by students of the University of Bourgogne at Dijon in France in the year 1985 to attempt the famed Turing test. It failed miserably. 100% of the interrogators realized Mikkel was a computer. However, some of the students continued to tinker with it. Making use of recently acquired ARPANET access, Mikkel was given some file transmission functionality. The result was the inadvertent creation of a computer worm. Continuing on from this, the story gets a bit crazy. 